Live from the Export Beer Garden Studios, this is the feature-length agenda for the 19th of October. The Agenda, an alternative commentary collective podcast. Uh, G'day there, welcome along to the Agenda podcast powered by Musashi with myself, G Lane, Manaya Stewart and Matt Heath. It's great to have everyone at home. Uh, The Fano is back together again. Bless, bless, bless. Great to be back. Yeah. It's so good to be here. It, it is in, great to in, in New Zealand. Last, last straggler back, Manaya. Yeah, yep. I had to spend a little pit stop there in Dubai. Um, mm. Beautiful, beautiful city there. And it really drove home to me the value of slave labour. Um, <laughs> the amount that you can get done yeah. by indentured servitude yeah. is just... I, th- I mean, look... Sky's the limit. Take the, well, quite literally, the Burj Khalifa was put together in four years. That's a 900-metre-tall building. Mm. You're telling me that we couldn't have had Christchurch back on its feet by now <laughs> if we had it just turned a blind eye to a couple of... Uh, so, couple of million so, Bangladeshis but, coming in. We're rocking around a dozen years since that uh, earthquake, yeah. and we've still got a lot of road cones, a lot of temporary fencing, a lot of gravel car parks. No stadium. No stadium. No stadium. No, so, no, no not even dirt... Not even no. sods turned on a new stadium. Couldn't even agree on what stadium to build. What we needed to do is put a dictator, like set it off, just yeah. be like the Canterbury Emirate, yeah. and then, right, here's Shake whoever. Yeah. I don't know. Shake uh, Jerry Brownlee. Shake Jerry, <laughs> Shake yeah. Jerry Brownlee. And he's going to import a bunch of Southlanders in there. They're yeah. going to live in uh, yeah. labour camps. Yeah. And they're going to get it back on its feet in four years. Well, yeah, because I'm, I'm a long time been calling for this, you know, Singaporean junta to take over in Christchurch. <laughs> the problem is getting them out once they're in. That, that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. It's very easy to inst- instill a, a junta. It's hard to get rid of them. It yeah. is. They, hate, they decide they don't want to leave. They mm. hate chewing gum too. Do they? There's some reason they have, they banned chewing gum, yeah. Oh, in they, in yeah, Singapore, there's no chewing gum. They don't like it on the footpath. They hate, they hate the chewing gum. Hey, um, some long-haul travel uh, yeah. has been completed by all of us, and mm. it's kind of triggered me a little bit around my pet hates on flights. Mm. Uh, and I, I have my, my top three. Okay. Uh, no, actually, my top four. Uh, I'll go from the fourth one uh, for me is usually elderly people uh, on flights, long-haul flights, need to go to the toilet. Um, and they walk down the uh, aisle and they grab the seats either side to balance them. Yeah. But as they, they don't really realise that they're putting their fingers on the touch screen. Uh, and I saw one particular gentleman go down and turn off every single screen as he walked to the toilet, including mine. I'm like, dude, and he's completely oblivious. The other one is the over-aggressive screen tapper behind yep. you, like, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, with a touch screen. And That's like, also a boomer. Yeah, yeah, and then the other one, <clears throat> number coming out number two, is usually a passenger behind you who's of a larger variety. Yeah. We. And the only way they can get out of their seat is by catapulting you out of your seat in <laughs> yeah. front. So they grip the seat in front and they go, <laughs> and they haul themselves up and when they're up, they let you go and you catapult forward and you're like, come on, man, I'm just, I'm sleeping here. But the number one, and it, <laughs> the number one is the uh, reclining etiquette. Mm. Yeah. And Matt Heath, uh, your flight home was particularly yeah. interesting on the reclining <laughs> etiquette. Which we all know is domestic, never recline. Yeah, never no. recline on no. domestic. Uh, international, you only recline after the first meal is served. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and but but you had a particular woman in front of you who I, I, I broke all, to, all all she, she etiquette. Re- rec- as the meal service was coming down, she reclined right into me, and <laughs> I was like, "What are you freaking doing?" So I was like, "Actually, I'm not standing for this." So I just shoved the. Che- I didn't a- know. I didn't know that you had the power to shove it right back up. <laughs> <laughs> so I just shoved it back up, and she tried to go down again, and I shoved it back up. You almost sent her past the yeah. vertical. I was like, and, you know, <laughs> fuck you. And then, and then she, she, she turns around. She's a terrifying looking woman. She turned around and have a go at me. And I said, you don't recline at mealtime. And she goes, when can I retire? And then I thought, okay, you've, you've started this. So then I waited till after. And then she tried to recline. And then I shoved it right <laughs> out back again. And then I held up my laptop and I said, I'm working now. <laughs> but, then, but then I went to the toilet and she reclined yeah, she while, while, while yeah. I was away. And I thought, can I keep going all, all night on this? Like, I like... I'm not sure, 100% sure I'm not the dick on this situation. but no. uh, And I just didn't want to be. I said to Joe Jury, I'm this close to being one of those global TikToks. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to shake your hand. I want to yeah. shake your hand. Yeah. So if I did one, one more pushing her right back out, she was going to explode. And even if I'm coming across quite 
okay in it. I just don't want to be in one of those because no. people are, the world is hungry for people misbehaving on airplanes. Oh, yeah. man, it was funny. Uh, Joe and I were just wetting ourselves, particularly when she'd go to the toilet every time and you'd put her seat back up again <laughs> and she'd come back and her seat's back up again. Uh, and just, just it, she was she was, and, she and, was a wounder, though. I saw and, and, her wounding the staff by ice cubes and her drink and oh, stuff. Yeah, she, kept, yeah. she kept on beeping and getting them to fill up her drink. Just yeah. go down and you, 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 you beep the staff to bring stuff you can't get, you yeah, can like go. And, you, you can go and fill up your own yes, fucking yeah. drink. Yeah. But also, she like this was like I think twelve hours into the flight because it was a fifteen and a half hour flight from Dubai to Auckland. She was she went for a walk her legs around and she just stood at the the end by the toilet, scouring at me with this really angry <laughs> look. And so I scoured back at her, but I couldn't hold it, and I just cracked <laughs> up, and I couldn't stop laughing. And then Joe would see me do it, and he started laughing, and we were just holding our guts laughing so hard. And it literally is the best comeback, a genuine Laugh. laughing your ass off at someone. is so much better than any insult or any revenge you could get, because you, you, if people are just laughing so hard, they're holding their guts. Oh, yeah. damn it. I wish I'd actually recorded you doing it, so you could have come that TikTok trend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> all, all of those things happened to me. All of those top four that yeah. you said, they all, all four happened. Of them. Well, what, on the way over, we had barely got, like the seatbelt sign was still on, the lady in front of me reclined. Oh, that's right. And I had about three red wine stockpiled on my uh, <laughs> tray in front of me. And I tipped them all over my lap. So I was like, great, 17 hours of this. I, the screen's about as close as this microphone is to my face. Um, the guy in front of me, worse than when they turn your TV off is when you're asleep and you've, your screen's off, they get up and they turn your TV on. So oh. you've just drifted off to sleep, then you get blasted in the face by this bright light. I don't think there's any, just go back to the recline, I don't think there's any situation where you fully recline. You can sort of, you do it, like when the light's off, there's a half recline you do. Oh, I think when yeah. all the lights go out, the meal's been served. If the, if the person night. behind you's reclined, then definitely. Yeah. Like yeah. If it, there is a reclining stage yeah. of the flight. Yeah. yeah. This woman didn't understand that at all. But it does fill me full of, that I did ruin her flight. Yeah, she yeah. would have had. She She's talking about me. you. She's so, talking about you. So what other things? So you had the yeah the recline with the red wine. Yep. Yeah. The, 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 the thing. Screen. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I did to revenge her. I was just. Boom, oh, boom, you were hard boom, tapping. Boom, <laughs> you hard, hard tapping. tapping. Oh, Boom you mother. Yeah. Hard you, should, tapping. you should have finished it off by catapulting it when you're out of your seat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the uh, I think I catapulted uh, the woman in front of me. Uh, <laughs> I, I, think, I, I definitely became aware of it. The other one was on those flights. So you know how if you're in the window seat, you'll put the pillow up against yeah. the wall yeah. and try and sleep? The guy's pillow kept falling back and landing at my missus's feet. She was so sick of passing it back to him. When it happened, <laughs> she just frisbeed it down the aisle. And when he turned around, she was like, sorry, I haven't seen it. <laughs> like, fuck this guy. I was doing that. I was playing um, post office with uh, uh, a person for a while with my pillow. Yeah. They're just like. <laughs> yeah. At one stage, you had so much stuff on your head while you were asleep. Man. You, had, you had an eye mask that was on your forehead, yeah. not even on your eyes. Yeah. You had your glasses on. Yeah. You had your headphones on. Yeah. You had something else like earplugs, like oh, the, yeah, with yeah, the strings yeah, the string coming the off. There was just a lot going on. And I had the in, inflatable pillow. Yeah, the around. inflatable yeah. pillow. There was yeah. just a lot, lot yeah, going lot. on was, above I, the shoulders. I forgot. I forgot all of that was on, and then I went to the toilet and, and committed a horrific crime. I think I was in there for half an hour. I couldn't believe what the I triple did. Triple flusher. Yeah. Well, it was a triple flusher, and there's still stuff because there's not water coming out on that thing. So no. if you start calling damage around the actual bowl, no. it's very hard to clean it up. Some of it can't get sucked out. Anyway, I've done this. Triple, I'm not feeling proud of myself. And I look up and I see myself in the mirror with all, all the shit. I was like, have I been walking? What have I done? What have I become? What have I become? All right. Well, okay. Well, let's, all right. let's, let's get, get into, into it. some sports, shall we? Let's get into it. Um, Cricket World Cup. The yeah. Black Caps are four from four. Yeah. Uh, and top of the table so far, we have eight games to play. Um, looking at it, we just beat Afghanistan overnight. Um, we've got India on Sunday night. Um, they reckon, this is what the BYC reckon, Dylan Cleaver, uh, five and a half wins is what we need to get so, through to the semis. So is it a half win, a rain out? Yeah. Um, very very six, cricket. So six we'll, so we'll got, get you through. Six so we'll, we'll get you through. So we've, we've got, got four. four. We've got four. Yeah, and we've got four more games. So we wow. have to, if we win two out of the next four, and Sri Lanka's one of them, so you'd like to take that off because they suck at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we're through to the semis. And then so, we parked the bus. Yeah, we wow. parked the bus because we have got a, a, we've got India. Uh, Don't waste a win against India, Australia, no. or Pakistan, South Africa, yeah, or South, South Africa, Africa yeah. that we don't need to. Oh, we've got a few more games left. Yeah, we've yeah. got five games. Yeah, I was interested because there's ten games, isn't there? I was um, talking to Trent Bolt today from India. Were you just casually? Yeah. I thought he was on the radio. 
Yeah, no, no Trent Bolt from India. We tried to get hold of a Trent Bolt from Ta- Tauranga, but he wasn't. <laughs> there available. must be a Trent Bolt in India. So someone has named <laughs> yeah. their child Trent Bolt, surely. <laughs> no, we were talk- We went live to Trent Bolt after the game. It yeah. was quite late at night when oh. we talked to him. Great New Zealander. But I says to him, I says, I says, I says, I'm just looking at this team, and with a healthy Kane Williamson, this might be the best ODI team New Zealand's ever had. Wow. Ooh. And he said, you know what? I've been thinking the same thing. He goes, I've been looking across our team and going, we are, we've got it all. We've got, we're, we're, we've got depth. We're well balanced. We've got every part of it. Um, teams in good spirits. We're rested, yeah. apart from that little injury with Kane Williamson. He was, mm. he was going. Um, Trent Bolt was saying... He agreed with me. Right. Well, that's because you've got Glenn Phillips, who top scored against Afghanistan. He was batting like seven or something, and yeah. he scored 71. And you've like got coming in. Daryl Mitchell, who's just, just a revelation. R- Ration Raven Ravindra. Like, he, Rav, he's, he's, Devin he's, Conway that we did. Because like, when I think about great New Zealand ODI teams, I think about 2015 always yeah. springs to mind. Mm. I think we've got a better team than 2015. Right. Really? You think they'd yeah. beat them if they lined up? Yeah, I think like, we'd beat them if they lined up. Really? Because we're more experienced now, so no yeah. one's going to like – like, could, could anyone be cool, more cool and calm collected than Trent Bolt now after all the IPL um, intense situations he's been in? They've mm. got the 2019... Demons. Sh- Demons, you know. Plus also he won the contract dispute, essentially. Yeah. By okay. saying, look, I'll play when I want and you'll still pick me. Yeah, you'll pick me. And they're like, yeah. oh, we won't, we won't, we won't, we won't. <laughs> we won't, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yeah, he's so hot. you got to take him back. But I tell you what, Matt Henry, Mr. Darcy, he's top of the uh, wicket-taking uh, table as well. Yeah. And f- the Fuckamana Express, Lockie Ferguson, he got three wickets overnight. He yeah. is bowling heat as yeah. well. Yeah. If he can stay fit, I mean, I don't know, Tim Southey's not going to get back in the team. Yeah. Well, the funny thing you, you say with um, – you know, people go, oh, you had an easy draw, you're playing the Minnows. But we did beat England early on, but the pro- other teams have not been beating the Minnows. No, that's the you, thing. You've got to beat the Minnows. You've got to get those guys. Yeah. And was, so to ha- hassle us for getting them, we're getting them. Yeah. We're getting through Bangladesh. That's speciality. We've got bangers. Well, aren't really a Minnow. No. No, bangers, Argentina, Netherlands, England. That was literally Argentina. the only Argentina. note Argentina. Of it. England. Argent- <laughs> uh, 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 Afghanistan. <laughs> We thumped at Argentina. We thumped and a lot Argentina. of other teams didn't. You know, yeah, I, I haven't seen any other teams beat Argentina <laughs> that I can remember. Um, so, yeah, uh, Sunday night, 9.30 is the uh, India game. Great, because it's Labor Day the next day. Yeah. Um, so you can stay up all Brilliant. night and just sleep all day on Sunday. So against India, be like, you're right, Matt Heath. Let's lull those Indians into a yeah. false sense of security. Let's, let let's them drop that one. Thump us. Let yeah. them thump us. Yeah. Let them just – because, you know, our specialty is knocking them out in the semis yeah. when they choke and – with the pressure of one and a half billion people on their shoulders. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's get into some cricket. Uh, rugby, I mean. <laughs> hey, before we start here, um, I have an apology uh, to issue. Um, there were some words spoken at the end of the, which won't be repeated, mm. uh, at the end of the uh, Ireland All Blacks game. In the heat of the moment, Matt Heath, you were there. Mm-hmm. I have tried to deny it by saying it was not me, it was AI, um, <laughs> which I believe is, is a sound... Defence in mm. the future, he'll, he'll, not, not for this, those of us that were here and saw you say yeah, it. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. I've got witnesses, which is if I was doing the commentary on my own, I could have said it was AI. Mm. Hillary Barry mounted that defence on Seven Sharp last night, the AI defence. Yeah, about trying to sell those keto gummies that Diane Wood was selling. Oh as well. yes, um, but unfortunately, as Matt mentioned, he saw you do it. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so uh, some words were mentioned around uh, uh, sucking on my croak, Monsieur. Uh, also around shoving your number one status and your favourite status up your ass, And then there was a comment made about uh, the Cranberries and the lead singer and a, a comparison to the campaign of the Irish. And uh, the complaints come through and says, I, I, I have to apologise to Ireland as a country. Sure. Irish fans. Is that Northern Ireland inclusive? Because they yes, play, yeah, 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 play as a yeah. uh, I also have to apologise to the Cranberries. So yep. I apologise to the Cranberries. And also I apologise to the Cranberries um, lead singer's family. Dolores' family. Yeah, Dolores' mm. family. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. So, um, yeah. yeah, the world's going to put that to bed then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, to, I, don't, I don't accept that apology, do you, Mino? So I don't know if the complainer would. Mm. I, I don't accept it. I mean, nah, it, no, it didn't feel no, sincere. Really I don't know. I feel like it's come <laughs> off the back of um, yep. some lengthy and quite uh, intense-looking meetings that I saw yep. you having. Uh, yep. and it, feel, it feels like PR speak. Well, should we – well, we <laughs> speak – well, look, listen for yourselves and see, you let me know. And like the anthem for the Irish All Series Zombie, like their lead singer, Ireland's Rugby World Cup campaign is dead. Oh, I'm just thinking to myself in that comment, just, just a little bit there. <laughs> mm. That didn't oh. sound like AI. Mm, no. 
And this wow. AI has advanced a lot in the it, last 24 hours. It has. Mm. It yes. has. Well, that was my initial defence, you know, and I did mm. come out on the Matt and Jerry show on uh, well, Monday on my sports update and I said, look, clearly that's not me. Mm. <laughs> uh, and uh, over the subsequent three days, uh, evidence has come to light. Mm. Social media, for example. Um, the truth. The truth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt mm. Heath has immediately come out and distanced themselves and pointed the finger at me. <laughs> Eyewitness well. yeah, testimony. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, with a mere culpa, it's not as powerful if you came in with the I didn't do it response until, right. you, until you were rumbled, you know? Yeah. That's right. You yeah. have, you haven't taken the early plea. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're going to have to face the full brunt of your uh, your actions here. Yeah, there we go. It uh, is great to see your boss getting a, a costa for this kind of thing, though. Uh, that, that really filled me with confidence. You know what? The funny thing was that uh, I got called into a meeting about it and uh, legit, legitimately he goes, um, they had a transcript. Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't have who said it. And, it, and uh, the conversation went, who the fuck said this? And I was like, me. <laughs> <laughs> you could have easily said, and Matt, like, Matt Heath. And they went, <laughs> and they went Jesus Christ, are we really going to have this conversation? I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> I said it was a heat of the moment. Yeah. Like, they came in so, like, kind of almost arrogant, the Irish. Yeah. The fans were arrogant. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, and wait, the wait, All Blacks wait. just choked them out. They cracked under pressure. It just got a bit carried away. Before that comment, there was a lot. There was a build up to that comment. It wasn't just about the cranberries. It was a little, there was a, a litany of. I think that makes it worse. Uh, it? The, the litany well, that of isolation other sounds terrible. That, it does. In your defence, though, uh, your lawyer could have mounted a defaming the dead defence, couldn't yeah, you? You I can't, can't defame the dead. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. You can. I mean, there is a. The decency and uh, bad taste, or, sure. or whatever, that they they threw at me. But I'm like, well, that's that's kind of subjective, isn't it? It's also um, this has gone outside the bubble because the way that these things happen is a uh, complaint is reported. So somebody in the ACC family has reported a crime. There's well, a snitch. No, there's a mole. I, th okay, this this is where things get interesting because um, obviously we simulcast on Radio Hodaki, mm. uh, and someone thought they were on ZB. Mm. So the complaint actually came via ZB. <laughs> uh, and ZB had to get a transcript of the finish of the game and send it through. And they're like, that doesn't sound like yeah. that. And then someone went, okay, I know what's happened here. I I and they got a transcript at the end of the ACC coverage. And they're like, bingo, there yeah. it is. There it is. So, um, look, yeah. No. I, I, look, I mean. We'll work through the process. Yeah, we'll work through the process. <laughs> but we're back again on Saturday morning, not Sunday, Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Uh, Argentina, uh, Matt Heath. Is there, are we going to come across an Argentinian banana? I don't think so. I don't think we've, we, we, we've like, I just can't see it. I can't, you know, we got through Ireland. Mm. It would be so ridiculous to lose to Argentina after getting through Ireland. I think our next, I think we should just take the foot off the bat. I can't believe that they've actually picked an A squad for this. <laughs> I would have. I would have. So you're I'd not have rested, I would have rested a few players. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Princess Talia, Talia's back. Yeah. yeah, he's back. All is forgiven for yep. whatever he got up to. We don't know. We don't know. Something. We, yeah. And I love how we don't. We'll never know. And all we can do is speculate. One we? game suspension. Yeah, that's yeah. what he got. Yeah. yeah. Gutting for him, as I was saying when we were last talking about this, like you're a winger, so you're in the All Blacks for about 15 seconds. So yeah. you know you want to you want to play. You're definitely not going to make it to two Rugby World Cups. So you definitely want to play in all those games you can. But he'd be thinking. Jesus, that uh, we beat Ireland and he gets another. I was going to gets another two games. Yeah, I was going to say that I would have picked Leicester in there. My sources uh, obviously informed me yesterday that they weren't. They were going to take Mark Talia. Um Roy Gard also couldn't get in there. Like, what's Roy Gard going to do? Score three tries against the last team he played against? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what's going with Roy Gard either. No, um, they, I, they, I would think that you'd want to up the mix of um, Cantabs and yeah. Crusaders yes, in the team. Exactly. You know. Not blues. Not blues. Not, there's, there's, there's as many blues and Highlanders in the team. There's more blues. There's dangerous. But there's about as many Highlanders as there are uh, can, well, there's Crusaders. One. That is dangerous. <laughs> no, there's two. Frizzell and ha De Groot. Hey, do you remember though last year, I don't want to give you guys PTSD or anything, but last year, remember the All Blacks went to South Africa and mm. they saved Fozzie's career with that victory yeah. uh, in South Africa. And everyone was like, yeah, like, and Fozzie was like, yeah. And the players were like, yeah, Fozzie mm. is the man. Yeah. And then they came back to New Zealand yeah. and they got thrashed by Argentina. Yeah. yeah. Now, the, oh. from the highs, from the highs, oh. from the highs, to mm. the lows, to the lows. I know, because we keep forgetting that we lost to Argentina yeah. at home. Yeah. 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 And they, we, we, were, we were on a high. Yeah. We, I mean, we were not night to Fozzie. Give us the Rugby World Cup. Now we're in the same position. We're oh on a high. Oh, my God, we're on the Fozzie roller coaster because we lost I to know. France. Yeah. This is what I'm getting at. We lost to France and then we beat two minnows and then we – Farted through against Ireland and possibly the best game of rugby 
this current All Blacks team is capable of playing. Yes. So we're on the up on the Fozzie yes. roller coaster. And then Fozzie's like, fuck you guys. Yeah. Don't, well, just watch me do it. <laughs> you think I'll I lose to Argentina. <laughs> I'll fucking do it. <laughs> Don't doubt me. No, you, no, this is the way I roll. It's the, it's the Fozzie <laughs> coaster. Life is a fuzzy coaster. Oh. You just got to ride it. You don't have to remind me of that. I was working on a talkback sports radio station when it was happening. <laughs> oh, man. Um, hey, and other rugby news. Obviously, that game, uh, sad day. Other rugby news. Um, the results of the uh, uh, New Zealand rugby investigation into the Ramfilly Shield mm. were released. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, you'd be shocked to know that um, they've said that uh, it was an accident. Yep. They dropped the shield on a concrete floor. Yep. Sure. Uh, and they don't know what the white substance racked into little bumps was with next it, to a rolled up note. Rolled up $5 yeah. note. They yeah. don't know what that was. They, that's inconclusive. They do. They said, more or less inferred that they know what it wasn't and that it wasn't drugs. So, oh. yeah. so you're telling me that you could have checked into an international flight with that shield in your bag? Yeah. No way. They should make They should make whoever did that study to fly through Singapore. Yeah. Yes, with the shield. With, with the, the shield. shield. <laughs> okay. If you're so sure, if you're so sure you take that shield through Singapore. Yeah, yeah. Go on, mate. Go right, on, mate. you do it. No, but you, don't know what, you don't know what that is? Hey, yeah. cutting edge science and technology we use to test that shield, man. Right. Okay? Right. So don't you doubt it, okay? Those little bumps that were racked up, that, that was that was just right. something. That was, I don't know. Don't know what it don't was. Don't know what it was. I can tell you what it wasn't. It was definitely not drugs. Was definitely. Definitely not drugs. Definitely. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't even think you would have had to. You know that little thing that they use at the airport where they swab your bag? Yes. You wouldn't have even had to touch the shield. Just walk no. into the room with that thing and it would have gone off. <laughs> they all like, yeah, up. That is drugs. Uh, yeah. Oh, look, I mean, it's kind of the the lamest report of all time. They could have said, look, they could have just. Actually, do you know what? They should have thrown the, the flatmates under the bus because that's yep. where it ended up at, at a flatmate's mm. of one of the players' mm. house. And that's the one who put the post up saying, oh, sh- fuck, we've broken the shield. Yeah. Just throw them under the bus. Yeah. They're like, no players took mm. drugs. Uh, but there were traces of drugs on there taken by um, associates of blah, blah, blah. And everyone would have gone, no, okay. Who are these fucking morons that don't learn from putting things on social Put media? Put the phone away. I know. Like, the like, crime is getting the phone out. Yeah, that is the crime. It's like all kinds of things can happen. You don't need to document them for the 15 likes you get from your fucking few, few yeah. friends. It's, 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 it's so fucking pathetic that something happens yeah. and your first instinct is to yeah. take a picture and put it up. And you just rumble the whole fucking situation. It's yeah. like having an undercover office with, officer with everyone in the world at all times. Yeah. It's an own goal officer. Officer own goal. 100%. Yeah. Well, it's, it's mana munching of the highest order. Yeah, You're yeah. just trying to leverage the mana of this famous person that yeah. you know to try and make yourself look cool in front of all of, all of your friends. Yeah. Throw your phone into the ocean. I feel like they should – I feel like I've said this before, but teams should pay someone – I'll put my hand up, to be the social media officer, and whenever there's a celebration going on, if I see someone's phone, I grab it and I just biff it into the nearest <laughs> body of water, and they're done. That's, that's all that needs to happen. Because, like I said, it's the phone. The phone's yeah. the, the crime. Yeah. Just, uh, just hand your phone in. Like, get those bags like you get when you go to comedy shows right now. You know, you go yeah. to the comedy shows and you have to put, put it yeah. in the bag. In the yeah, bag. yeah. Just whoever is in charge of the – and I, I guess the, the thing with the Rand Furley Shield and these NPC teams is they're n- semi-professional. Yeah. So they don't really yeah. have like I'm sure that's happening with the All Blacks. There's someone yeah. going around taking everyone's phones off yeah. them. Well, I'm sure it's happening even at Super Rugby level, but at NPC level, you know, you go, you guys are hardly paying me. You're not yeah. fucking taking my phone off. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> there's like American athletes because they get paid millions of yeah. dollars. They'll p- they'll pay all their mates to be on a retainer. And the understanding is, if anything ever goes down, yeah, the part of the retainer is. You're going to jail for whatever dumb shit I'm doing. <laughs> but I will pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to do nothing. But if I get caught with something, it's you're you. going to jail. Yeah, It's you, buddy. So maybe we need to pay the NPC players a little bit more so they can do that. Yeah. They I can have so. an entourage. There's no one in the NPC running a paid entourage. That's just <laughs> right. <laughs> let's, let's move on to basketball. Now, Donald mm. Trump. God, mm. it's great to have Donald Trump back in, back in play. Uh, he wants to... Uh, to talk to LeBron about transitioning uh, with four or five other players to become the best women's basketball team ever. Here you go. You know, I'm not a big fan of LeBron James, but I said this. I would like to meet with LeBron, say, LeBron, I've decided I'm going to get out of the presidential business, get out of the real estate business. I'm going to become a basketball coach of women. And I'm going to get him and four or five other guys to transition. And we are going to have the greatest basketball team in history. We will be undefeated forever. 
forever. He's, he's now just a full stand-up comedian. I know. He's just basically a stand-up comedian on tour. He'll be supporting Joe Rogan on a uh, Joe Rogan and Dave Chappelle on a uh, a stadium comedy tour pretty soon. That is literally a Dave Chappelle joke in his last <laughs> special. That he does this whole bit about LeBron James transitioning and playing the WNBA where he would average 100 points a game by himself. Oh, he did, didn't he? <clears throat> yeah. So, not, so, he, so he's stolen that joke off Dave Chappelle. <laughs> so he's a stand-up – he's a presidential candidate who's – Acting as a stand-up comedian and being a Dan Cook and stealing people's material. Stealing people's jokes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 100%. And you listen to the crowd, though, getting in behind him. It's like, like, oh, God. Well, the, uh, his I don't cr- think they found it funny. I don't think his crowd watched a lot of Dave Chappelle. No. Um, so that's probably why he can steal that. A lot of his crowd don't know who LeBron James is as well. Yeah. No, he, yeah. there was clearly the only basketball player he knew as well because he's like, LeBron James and four other guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Four other whatever. Some other Kobe Bryant. No, um, he's gone the way of the cranberry singer. Um, <laughs> well, you know, this is this is before. And Ireland's this is before. <laughs> To be fair to Donald Trump, this is before his special. He's just working out his material. Oh, okay. right, okay. He's touring for a year and then he'll, he'll hone it until it's a killer till he's murdering. Yeah. When he's murdering, when he's got a killer set. Well, there's only about a thousand people in the world that can do that. <laughs> <laughs> when he's got that set, oh. he's just got every part of it honed every night. It's like feedback. It's like it's like customer feedback. You work it, you hone it. Once he's got that honed, he'll do an hour special for Netflix and then he'll retire that material and start the whole when process is, again. When is the presidential elections? I don't want to get into that, but is that next year? Didn't next we, year. Didn't we just have it? Nah. That was the, no, yeah. that was the New Zealand one. Yeah, we don't have a president. So my vote for Trump didn't go through then. Nah, uh, no. Did you, make up a, did you make up a box and apparently, put Trump? Apparently yeah. half of the 550,000 special votes are for Trump, so they, they, they <laughs> go through it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I sent mine in from Dubai, so I count among those. It yeah. must be so frustrating for um, people going up against Trump, hey? Yeah. Because yeah. he just gets more and more popular and he won't go away and people get more and more deranged and say so more and more intense things to deal with the fact that the atrocity that he exists. Yeah. It well, just makes people so angry. They can't operate in a political – they no. can't do anything because they're so angry about it. You've been your entire <laughs> life being like, right, I think this is the best policy that's going to help our people go forward. And he's like, what if LeBron James was in the WNBA? <laughs> like, wouldn't he waste them? You're like, well, how am I supposed to compete? How am I supposed to get this uh, sewage waste treatment <laughs> yeah. plant I want to get put on the back end Healthcare. of San Francisco? <laughs> I've thought this quite a bit about LeBron James because I was like, hey, wouldn't he be a tremendous uh, second rower in rugby union or rugby league? He wouldn't even need a, a lifter in the lineouts. He would win every lineout by himself. And then I thought, well, he's actually a pretty handy basketball player, so why would he do that? You get paid, probably getting paid more than that. So, like, there's a there's must be an upper upper limit of height for a lock, so you can still do all the other stuff you have to do. But it's like six foot eight, six foot nine. I think. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Some of them are. That's how tall LeBron is. Yeah, you're right, yeah. So you wouldn't have a seven footer. Shaq would be no good. No, and no, neither would a young Ming. Young yeah, Ming would be no good. Either. No good at the breakdown. No, no. it's terrible. <laughs> and imagine him, imagine, imagine him with the head contact when he was trying to tackle someone. Yeah, 100%. Young yeah, Ming will be just like <laughs> taking heads off left, right and centre. Yeah, I've, always, I've thought that there's only one athlete who would genuinely uh, benefit from transitioning, uh, and that is Israel Folau. It's the only way that he could apologise for the statements <laughs> that he made. If he went through a rebrand, came out one day and was like, look, I've had to think about it. I was wrong. I was mixed up with the wrong crowd. Uh, I have now transitioned and I would like to uh, apologise for my past life. Yeah. You know, I was in denial or whatever and now I'd like to play I, I was thinking, Isabel. I, I, was thinking about, I was thinking about something last night because I was watching, I'm re-watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy with my son. Tremendous. And I'm a big fan of Gimli, uh, the dwarf. And I was thinking, you know, remember that like, there's a famous story uh, way back in Elizabethan times. There was a game of cricket and a guy turned up with a bat that was the size of the stumps. <laughs> and so it was just the exact same size of the stumps. Yeah, and it's like, I've, I've solved it. There was yeah. no rule about how wide the yeah. uh, bat was. And if you read about this, uh, this happened in Yorkshire and it caused a riot in London when the news got back by horseback that someone had done that. <laughs> People hit the streets and started burning stuff. They were so angry about it. So anyway, they went, we'll change the rules. But I was thinking, you put a Gimli on the field, then you're getting a red card straight away. The first person that comes yeah. into tackle, yeah. there's head contact. Yeah. You get the short enough player on the field. You just put him out like he's, he comes off the bench at the start, you get the red card, and then you sub him off for someone else. Well, well it, it almost happened in the, the semi finals of the NPC. I saw a game where a guy actually led with his head into the <laughs> defender, and the defender couldn't do anything, and he got 10. Yeah. And he was bleeding and knocked out because he's basically <laughs> being headbutted by the attacking player. And the, the refs are like, it's mitigating, I'm not, it's not red but you did make contact with the head. And it's like, the guy yeah. headbutted so, me. So if you have a, an illogical rule like that that has no grey area and no nuance yeah. that any contact with the head is either a yellow or a red, 
you got to put Gimli on the field. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was ridiculed by the, in the mainstream media last year for suggesting that someone at a ruck could put their head in a dangerous position to get a red card from the other team. Yeah. It makes so much sense. If you see Scott Barrett come flying in, just put your forehead on the floor. It'll break your neck, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but how much do you love your country, you know? Yeah. Well, we, we might need to watch out for this for Argentina because they're going to have to do something different. So they're going to have to do something different in this, this game. So they're coming into tackles with their arms held behind yep, yeah. their backs. Yep. The ball yeah. is, but they've got the ball. The they ball. hold the ball in the of their back, <laughs> and they just run into shoulders <laughs> and dive at the floor. Yeah. yeah. So go and tackle this. <laughs> I think you're onto something. If we yeah. see Gimli, son of Gloin, suiting up for Argentina this weekend, yeah. just no, know what they're up they're, to. We know this. Yeah, we'll we're, smell a rat. We're not, we're not stupid. And we my axe <laughs> and my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, golf, uh, summer's on its way, so that means uh, golf is, is back on the cards. Uh, not only is the ACC Golf Opens back next year, which we'll let you know about soon, um, there is an event called Chasing the Fox, which mm. is with Ryan Fox uh, uh, in Auckland. Basically what happens is there's six teams of um, sports stars, rugby players, cricket players, um, personalities, who basically try and all combine try and beat Ryan Fox Yes, um, over like a – a six-hole course. Is this, um, is this the one where John Key hit the hole-in-one yes, last year? Yes, with the driver Yeah, on a par three. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's back again. <laughs> it's back again. Um, and you can either you can actually play during the day. Um, you can p- book a team, book a four-ball and play, um, or you can just come and crush Export Ultras with us uh, on the party hole. Um, there's a 20% uh, discounted tickets, which is already preloaded, um, which you just have to text uh Oh, well, you just have to text FOX to 3236 and you'll get a link uh, to that uh, to get some tickets and uh, and come along. Uh, it's in, I think it's in December. It's just before um, Christmas there. So a good day out if you want to go there. Um, and also you get to probably meet uh, the great New Zealander that is uh, Ryan Fox. The Ryan Fox. Fox. Yeah, the Foxy. Foxy uh, Noxy. Foxy Noxy. Bonus episode of Behind the Absolute Scenes uh, is out. We we wrapped up the series, but we found some, um, some lost content from... <laughs> The Lions Tour, mm. uh, Matt Heath, which you'd recall. Oh. Um, so in honour of the Rugby World Cup, um, we have a bonus. And it was when we had Dylan Cleaver when he was working for the Herald. I was embedded with yeah, us. Yeah, and they embedded him with us for three weeks. And, yeah. boy, I don't – yeah, listen he was, to the, he was listen more, he was He was more shell-shocked than when they embed people with the American military. Yeah, listen to the – listen to the – here's the teaser. Yeah, I was exposed to things that night that I had never been exposed to before. 50,000 Lions fans coming. G-Lang, 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 G-Lang. We had one particular party at the King's Arms. Man making love to another man's sock. The week went pretty much downhill from there. A bottle fly across the room and hit someone on the head. And they wanted his blood. Every now and then I get flashbacks. I wonder if they regret that. So there you go. Um, jump on the ACCNZ.com uh, to, to check out that, that uh, bonus Jesus episode. Jesus Christ, I remember one morning Oof. waking up after we'd had that. Remember we used the sink? We had the, we, oh, the, the cafe. We were in the cafe yeah. out of the sink. That was a bottle of vodka. That was a big evening. That, that was. tour, I had just started working for the ACC, and my first task was to send out all the tickets, and I emailed them all out, and I left my phone number on the bottom of the oh. email. <laughs> and, across, <laughs> and across that tour, I had calls at all hours. Where the fuck's Leah? Where's the fucking Jerry? Where's Matt? Where the fucking blah, blah, blah. Um, but the King's Arms was definitely the, yeah. um, the wow. Gaza Strip of that tour. Well, the thing with the King's Arms, it was in its death throes, wasn't it? I think in two weeks after that, uh, that match, it was set for demolition. Mm. And yeah, people right. knew that. Yeah, they knew that, and they, they, they approached that evening. As like a demolition party, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was it was it was like funny with lines too, is it? Because it's so much hype, and they say that they're like like I said, then that thing 50, 60,000 fans turn up. No, they don't. No, like maybe a few thousand turn up, but all, but it's just the expats that come out of the woodwork in yeah. New Zealand that turn up. Mm. And and in reality, it's not actually that many p- people out here. And it's always yeah. overhyped, and everyone yeah. goes the, like the camper van rumor goes yeah. around. Yeah. Every camper van in New Zealand is sold out. It's yeah. like. No, they're not. No, 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 <laughs> no they're, they're not. not. Um, but the, also, the, the economy just made four billion dollars, yes. and really, it's just uh, some Brits from the North Shore came <laughs> yeah, in and, and went to a different pub than they normally go to. Yeah, correct. Um, hey, also um, coming up this summer is the Z Money World Champs. Chance to win uh, a share of thirty thousand dollars just by popping a Manu. Um, there are going to be events all around New Zealand and a finals in Auckland, which we'll be commentating. Uh, just text Manu, M A N U, to 3236 and gain early access to registrations right now. 
But uh, white on of the week, Matt Heath, any, in the sporting world, what gave you gave you white on? No, I mean, that, that All Blacks Irish game. Yeah. Well, I mean, phenomenal. I mean, we, the, we were now com- the Dodgers are out. Yeah, now the Dodgers are out. We, we, <laughs> we were, you know, we commentated right at this desk here and the, 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 there needed to be a defibrillator. I don't, I, it was so tense and so exciting. Oh. We made the mistake. We, we laid oh. into too many Red Bulls. You had about five coffees before oh. we started. And the nerves and the anxiety and the tension was so – it was – I, I was seriously. My, I could hear my heart beating through the <laughs> microphone. We should. We should put um, heart monitors on us this Saturday. Yeah, we should to see how see see how that goes. Because yeah, you're right. I was, I, I, I was. My hand was shaking. If we didn't, ha- if we weren't on commentary, yeah. I wouldn't have been able to watch that. It was good to have a, a, a something to do. Yeah, like yeah. A, a job. But, and and uh, that, that was before. That was even before the game started. That was just with the atmosphere yeah. in the stadium. Oh. That was just. That was just during the haka. The haka. The haka, which was mic'd up, <laughs> got drowned out by all the singing. Yeah. That was epic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that has to be everyone's wide on for this week, doesn't it? The All yeah. Blacks yeah. game. I mean, that's ph- phenomenal. Yeah. And and I've, I've got a hot take here. Oh. We beat a better team than we are. They are a better team than yeah. we are, and and that's what you got to do. And that's great. They they, that's, they they played a played a better game, beat us. I think. It was weird that they didn't kick the ball. I think they they, they, they would probably look back and say they could have done it a little bit different, whatever, and there's a bit of luck here and there. Who, who freaking knows? But mm. they must feel so hard done by. Yeah. As, as, as a once-in-a-generation Irish team, it's never going to be back. The sex pest is out. Yeah. They would have really been geeing themselves up for that one too. Yeah. You're right. It, it was an advantage for you guys having a job to do and having something to – Yeah. Because I was just watching it with one eye open, blind drunk on a couch in Dubai. <laughs> and I was just about having a heart attack at the end and the illegal stream we were watching it on cut out with oh. like four oh. minutes left to go. Oh, Jesus. So, but we were up by four at this point, but it just glitched. And we sat there just freaking out, screaming at each other. No one knew what to do. And then it – uh, when it fixed itself, it caught up to like the live time, and the game was just over. And the Irish were sitting in the on the ground with their oh, yeah, hands in their hands. And I was like, oh, thank fuck. Oh, oh, that's actually oh, quite oh. good. That's yeah. that, I would that I'd if I that I'd hope that's actually a good. So result. you didn't you didn't go through the 150 phases oh, of God. Irish on the tack until <laughs> no. How many phases was that? It was like 30, 30 odd phases until Sam White like. So finally went, okay, I'm grabbing the ball here. That's yeah. over. We can't have any more of this. No, nah, that's right. And, no. and Wayne Barnes was like, I'm not, I don't care what happens. I'm not blowing this whistle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not being part of this. I don't, for like, until, until it rocks around 50 phases, I'm not interested in this I game. Did, I did talk about it on Monday when we reviewed it, and I'll say it again here, that I'm going to have to say, I don't want to like saying this about Wayne Barnes, but that was a great game that he refereed because he basically said to players, get out of there. Don't touch it, even if they were there. Whereas other refs would have just pinged them straight yeah, away. Yeah, he and he let it. Him up. So he stopped people without just getting the penalties. And, and, he let and, it flow. And as you know, the two yellow cards we got, like obviously the Cody Taylor one had to happen. Yes, because that, that was a clear. Yeah. He clearly, clearly, we know what he did there. He whipped <laughs> the legs out from yeah. it. <laughs> and the other one's just a stupid rule of I rugby hate that union. Rule. That, yeah. What the? What does that rule? Who wins? Do we not want to see more intercept, intercepts? Don't, yeah. don't we want to? Yeah. Don't shouldn't rules be designed to make the game? More exciting. What are you trying to stop with that rule? Yeah, and if you're in a position to be able to knock the ball down, then that was a bad pass. Yeah, you know, you should be allowed yeah. to do it. And it's knocked on. Yeah, it should yeah. just be and a knock a on. And yeah, it's, yeah. A yeah, it, it's the, the idea that it's ten in the bin is just so disproportionate. Yeah, a disproportionate punishment. Yeah, it, it, it's it's phenomenal. Although, as we said, it was the greatest thing that happened to us because that meant that um, uh, that uh, Dick Pick. I say after David Aaron Smith. He got to Aaron have that for distribution. Aaron for distribution. He got to have that rest before halftime, then yeah. rest all the way through yeah. halftime, and then rest for the start of the second half. And he got to be play right to the last eighty minutes of the game. And I think that was huge for our victory. So, shit yeah. roll worked out great for us. Yeah, attendance required. Obvious. Eight AM um, on iHeart Radio. Radio Hodaki. Uh, text North or South to three two three six to get your Hodaki frequencies because it syncs up beautifully with the coverage. Mm-hmm. So you oh, can it's gonna be so good. So you can mute that. Um, my my oh. TAB good punt. Uh, for the agenda this week, um, is inspired by the prison parlay. Mm. I don't know if you saw the prison parlay, Matt Heath, but there was a particular gentleman in America who had a $10,000 bond to get out. He had 500 bucks left, and he put it on a, um, a six-way parlay and won 12 grand. Uh, and, <laughs> and his freedom. And his freedom. And it was, it was captured on the prison phone video um, <laughs> of him laying it down. And he, you know, good on him. He, he, he picked it uh, like a dirty nose, and he won his freedom. So... Um, I've gone for a seven-way prison parlay, uh, multi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going for Taranaki to win the MPC. I'm going for New Zealand to beat Samoa in the Rugby League this weekend, which we haven't even touched on. 
Uh, I've gone for New Zealand to beat Argentina in the Rugby World Cup. South Africa to beat England in the Rugby World mm-hmm. Cup. Australia to beat Pakistan in the Cricket World Cup. Sri Lanka to beat Netherlands in the Cricket World Cup. And England to beat South Africa in wow. the Cricket World Cup. And that is going to, um, for the $100, oh. uh, is going to return us 600 So England, South Africa is the Cricket World Cup. <laughs> yes. The, so that's interesting. We've got, the, we've got England, South Africa in cricket and rugby. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The one, the one that makes me nervous there is Sri Lanka versus Netherlands just because of the, the rogue uh, Netherlands win. Yeah, I yeah. know. And how much Sri Lanka suck. But if, I, was, I was thinking, I don't know. I think Sri Lanka will make a comeback. If, if it comes down to that being the last leg we need, you need to ring the selectors for the Black Caps and call Logan Van Beek up to the Black yeah. Caps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll have him back, thanks. We'll have him yeah. back. Is old mate Rippon still playing for the Netherlands? Michael Rippon, yeah, I think he is. Yeah, right. I came across something really weird talking about the uh, league. I was, I was walking in Folds Park. I was yeah. walking my dog, and then I saw some giant men in red playing a slow motion game of rugby league. And then when I got closer, I realised it was the Tongan team. Oh, shit. And they were playing... I, you'd know more about this, Manoa, mm. but is there a form of practicing where you just walk through everything like you're in slow motion? And I was wondering, are they doing that so it just to be hassled about positions, so they just know exactly positions or something? But it was a it was a game of rugby league, yeah. And, and they, they were, were walking. They were walking. And they were doing it, and then it's probably just to get the leagues moving. Them, like yeah. a lot of them might have just flown in. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe this is something that just broke out after they I, were sort of dicking around with the ball. For I a bit. thought I thought it had a time sort of vortex, <laughs> and and I was in normal speed, but the rest of the world had gone into slow motion or something. I was looking for birds to be flying slowly above them. A time vortex. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Usually they do. They do do the walking. Touch yeah. kind of thing, but yeah. if it was slower than that, you know, I don't know. Yeah. maybe they just were yeah on the slowdown. Yeah. Um, I think that's a great that's a great bet. New Zealand to beat Samoa in the league. If, obviously, we didn't touch on it, but the everyone's so jizzed up about the Samoan team, and then you look at it on paper, you're like, oh, that's actually not that. Nah. That's not that good. They got the Panthers centre playing standoff for them. They got a fullback who, granted, was excellent in the last couple of games he's played, but is a pretty new newbie. Um, I think they're going to blitz them. This is all chalk as well. Like nothing yeah. is outrageous. I no, mean, no, yeah. no. So yeah. hopefully that comes off. Big, big weekend uh, in your hood though uh, as well. Yeah, Matt Heath and Mount. There's a triple header, isn't there, at Eden Park for the uh, the rugby yeah. league? I don't think you can call it a triple header if one of the teams is an A team. Like one of the games is oh. two A teams. That's well, not that's well, not a triple header. Well, there's three it? games. The bars sure. are open. For three games, sure. So I think you'd call that a triple. Last time there was a triple header there. There was a hell of a, it was a hell of a Barney going on in the stands. By the time the third game came, <laughs> uh, so uh, no, nah, we'll but this is a there. league crowd though, so oh, they'll be a lot more yeah. subdued. Do you think? <laughs> Sorry, that was that rugby one I was talking about. <laughs> okay, now it's time for topper plays of the week. Of the week. Brought to you by Leader NZ's Lasagna Topper. Tell you what, I took a bag of uh, frozen southern fried chicken toppers home last night. Mm. You need to get into the freezer and get into those. Mm. They, uh, especially if you're your kids, Matt. Yeah, I feed. I just that's what I feed my kids. Yeah, pretty much uh, southern fried chicken toppers. Anyway, number three on the topper plays of the week is the umpire down trail uh, coming out of the England. Uh, what looks like some sort of village cricket situation. Mm. Um, where the fast bowler comes running in, stops, and just whips the pants down <laughs> of the umpire, like, and the umpire's buck, ass is buck naked. Well, you're uh, very susceptible, aren't you? Yeah, oh, you are, because you're standing there. You, and umpires always have their hands on the front there, yep. and you, you've, you've got your back to the bowler, and he just stops and whoosh, down it goes. What, what he needs to do is just widen the stance a little bit. As we learned at the uh, fan zone in Paris, that there was one of the members oh. of our party there who was trying to try and desperately to down trow any person that she could find. Yes. She, by the way. Uh, she um, also tried much. to stick her finger in my butt. Yep. Um, she achieved her goal with me. And what you needed to do was just spread the spread the legs a little bit and that stops the down trow. Yep. So mm-hmm. a wider stance perhaps from well, What umpire. would be the punishment if you down trowed a umpire in a, you know, an international career game like, say, Erasmus or something like that? So Exact revenge. Someone wanted to sacrifice their career. Oh, I think I, Joe Kelly did it for the Dodgers when he decided to sacrifice himself by, uh, exist, you know, getting revenge on the Astros by just cleaning a guy out by having a ball at his head at 100, at 100 miles an hour, just as, as retribution and the, the first time he faced them the next season. Like, imagine that. What, what, what do you reckon? Because it doesn't really sort of happen. What are the rulings no. around that? And I don't know? think you can lay hands on the official. Well, umpire. Like, uh, umpire or referee, I think they go pretty... I think, um, you know, Hannah Wilkinson, the uh, 
mm. female um, football player football player got done because she put her hand on the ref. She got like a three match suspension for that mm, right. and, and a red card. Um, so, but I'd, you'd have to do it at the end of your career. So you'd yeah. have to be like you know Ross Taylor's last test match just, just goes, to goes up to Razzy Erasmus and goes woohoo. Yeah, because yeah, what could happen if like you go out on your last game, you're batting, you're at second, you, it's your final innings, yeah. teams innings. You go out and on your way off, you just go over down to uh, Razzy and head for the sheets. Because who are they going to punish? No, nah, exactly. You have to, it has to be near the end. You go, he, goes, that, he goes, that's when 2019, you motherfucker. <laughs> you would have to have had a nothing career, I think, because that's all you're going to be remembered for after that. You know, if you yeah. were Ross Taylor and then you yeah, dacked the guy on the If you're Zidane, you can headbutt someone at, yeah, the, in, the, in the World Cup final and people will remember a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, I think we've picked the wrong person with Razzy Erasmus. Those, ty- those pants are like going nowhere in a hurry. Like, yeah, that would be the worst. Uh, if you go over, it's your last act in your career, you retire. And you're walking off and you go, you can't get him down. And you're on your knees behind him. <laughs> Would there be an easier umpire on God's green earth to down trail than Jason Hoyt? Oh, oh my God. It's, it's amazing those pants are up ever. <laughs> he's nothing, there's nothing to him though. It's, that's the brilliance of it. He, he can't, he, he wears, he wears uh, pants from cotton on kids. So <laughs> giving them off. And, and at all times as well, um, screaming reels, the entire series, they're on a boat, they're at sea. Pants the yeah. entire time. Yeah, he doesn't wear shorts. I don't know if you've seen. He's got dangerously skinny poles. Mm. Right. Dangerously skinny, yeah. I don't know, but like, is what's on display? <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, if he's starting to cover things up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two on the uh, top of plays of the week. Al Michaels, apparently he's never eaten a vegetable. Is it true that you have never knowingly eaten a vegetable in your life? That is true. That is true. I was born when my parents were 18 and my mother hadn't even read Dr. Spock at that point. So she just let me have the, the, the run of the, uh, of the course. And uh, I always push the vegetables away. To this day, no. And I guess what I've proven, Chris, is that man does not need vegetables to survive. But is it- I agree. Who is that guy? Who's he, Al Michaels? He's an NFL commentator. Oh, right. Did he play? I don't know. I he did play at one point, yeah. Because CTE could explain a bit of that. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's an unusual hill to die on. I'm close to that. I don't. Eat, I, I I don't eat vegetables. I, I I've, in fact, mm. I've got really unhealthy for not eating vegetables. I don't like them, and I don't want to eat them, and I don't. I, I hate them. I eat a pea. I eat. I eat a pea, but it has to be covered in cheese sauce. Asparagus, if it's rolled in bread. Mm, yeah, maybe like against. Like I'll have lettuce in a burger. Yeah, well, that was what I was going to say. You can't tell me this guy's never had a like slice of tomato in a sandwich yeah. or something. Surely, it's, it's, it's a hard. fruit. It's, it's a fruit. No, it's a fruit. Yeah, yeah. true. That's it's hard, but um, it's a fruit. Great voice, but also uh, reference to the famous Doctor Spock. Yeah. So the do, do, parenting. Yeah, because there was Doctor Spock. The there's Spock yes. on the Star Trek Enterprise, yeah. and there was Doctor Spock, who was the parenting guru, right? Yeah. Oh, I was and, wondering what that was. And <laughs> he was the he, well, Dr. Spock. I was reading about this recently. His his main parenting advice was if a kid cries, leave it. Just leave it alone. Because uh, yeah. yeah. you start, if you go over to it, you're teaching. It's like 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 not feeding a dog if it begs. Yeah, yeah. If your kid's crying and you go over and give it any attention at all. If your kid's and, crying. And, that, and, that, and, and as a result, that's why the boomer generation is what they're like yeah. you know, emotionally. Because emotionally <laughs> just cold. <laughs> just cold. If yeah. your kid's crying, just roll up a newspaper and smack it on the snap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Number one on the top of plays of the week, uh, Joey Wheeler, who was at oh. the Flying Mullet and Papa Moa um, on Sunday morning for the Ireland All Blacks game. Um, obviously peeling into some beers throughout the game. The emotion took over, and then they crossed back to him, and uh, he was atop a table, uh, tie around his head, like like he was, he was at a wedding or a 21st, <laughs> and then unloaded this. There's a party in Even know what he was saying in that no, last but, he, but never has a live cross captured the, fe- the oh. feelings of a nation more <laughs> accurately. It doesn't totally. matter what he was saying. Yeah, it, everyone was on that same level at that point. I'm just glad they didn't cross to him after the last pool game that Japan won, um, because there oh, could have yeah. been potentially. Uh, yeah, it could have been problematic. <laughs> um, and how good uh, drink drink bliss has become the yeah. anthem, and yeah. I, I hope that it does become the anthem because the yeah. 
yeah, 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 yeah. That's what. But we can get behind that. Yeah, well, when we were in Paris, yeah, remember we we tried to outsing those Irish people, and we we did. did. We fucking shat on them with yeah. bliss. Uh, I just rewatched the video of that yesterday afternoon, and as the camera pans around, there's a table between oh, us and the yes. Irish, and they've all got their fingers in their ears. Yeah, that, <laughs> they were collateral damage. Yeah. I were. love that bar, the Moose in Paris, because yeah. they didn't give a shit that yeah. there was people booked next to us yeah. Yeah. trying to have dinner, and yeah. I'm standing on a table. I was trying to I was trying to play that video to Joey Wheeler the other day, but I could, I couldn't find it on my phone I, I, you guys got that video uh, yeah I've got it yeah, I, gotta I think it. it's been it's scrubbed too. from social media but yeah. I can oh, see oh yeah too. I was trying to look at it on <laughs> social media <laughs> yeah there was something on the tables mm, that yeah. you know needed to get well oh. it was it was no it was it was, <laughs> pl- it was plaster from yeah. the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've tested they've, it. They've tested no, we've tested it. And it's it. definitely not no, drugs. No, it's definitely not drugs. Don't know what it was. Well, I wouldn't go through Singapore Airport with it, but it's definitely <laughs> not drugs. <laughs> okay, that's the feature act agenda uh, for the Thursday. We'll be back tomorrow with the Daily. Thanks for bloody joining us. You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast. <laughs> For more episodes, subscribe on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.